In any Pokemon speedrun, luck is really important. Between critical hits, moves missing, and getting good stats on your starter, just to name a few, there are a myriad of things in Pokemon speedrunning that you need to be concerned about if you're trying to get a good time. But in most any percent runs of Pokemon games, even if you get really unlucky, you're probably not going to lose that much time in the grand scheme of things. You want to see a Pokemon speedrun where if you get unlucky, you lose hours? You want to see the guy who attempted it probably too many times? Well, sit back, relax, and let me tell you the story about a Pokemon speedrun that you should never, ever attempt, under any circumstance. Unless you want to, I don't know, I'm not your dad. I'd like to introduce you to our two main characters. This is my good friend Shen, and this is his new best friend, Zigzagoon. This isn't the first time Shen has appeared on this channel. If you've seen the original video on this channel that sort of kickstarted my teaching math and science through Pokemon career, then you've probably seen the Safari Zone clip, and that clip is this guy. Uh, and this is, um, well, it's, it's, it's Zigzagoon. It's Zigzagoon. Uh, it's a normal type. Pokemon, uh, you know it, it's Zigzagoon. If you are, or ever were, a child, uh, which probably, I would say, uh, almost, maybe everybody, but you probably wanted a level 100 Pokemon at some point. And on top of that, you probably wondered how easily and how quickly you could get through a Pokemon game if you had a level 100 Pokemon, like, right from the start. If you were like me, you uh, maybe even went to a GameStop location in the year 2006, uh, and maybe spent somewhere between, oh gosh, I don't know, 10 and 30 US American dollars to buy a Game Shark to get a level 100 shiny Blaziken onto your copy of Pokemon Sapphire. It's not cheating. I paid for it with money. That's the American way, baby. But if you don't want to cheat, then you're going to have to do it for real. And boy, oh boy, did Shen do it for real. On one fateful day in 2020, a year known for nothing bad happening ever, Shen decided to boot up his stream and do an attempt of a brand spanking new Pokemon Sapphire speedrunning category he had just invented. Level 100 before the first trainer. Yeah, you heard that right. The goal of this speedrun is simple. You must have a Pokemon reach level 100 before you participate in one trainer battle. Then you go through the rest of the game, beating it as quickly as possible with your new demonic companion. No glitches, no RNG manipulation. So what are we looking at here? Well, the very first trainer fight in Pokemon Sapphire is the Rival 1 battle at the top of Route 103, just north of Old Ale Town. Okay, what Pokemon do we have to grind with to get experience before this fight? Well, on that route, you have Poochyena, Zigzagoon, and Wingle. They're all between levels 2 and 4. The best experience you can get? Let's see, from a level 4 Zigzagoon, you get 34 experience. Wowie, double digits. That's gotta be good. It's more than one digit, that's for sure. Okay, 34 experience on the high end. So how much experience do we need total to reach level 100? I sure hope it's not more than 34. Well, dear viewers, let me introduce you to experience curves. Every Pokemon is assigned to one of the many experience groups, as if there weren't enough categories for Pokemon to fit into already. They are medium fast, erratic, slightly fast, fluctuating, slightly slow, medium slow, fast, slow, medium fast, and charm. Charm's not one of them, that's a physics joke. Uh, it'll be funny to like 10 or 11 people, so please let them have it. There's not much humor in their lives. The experience groups take wildly different amounts of total EXP to get to level 100. The fluctuating group is the slowest overall, coming in at a whopping total XP of over 1.6 million. The fastest is erratic at only 38% of that total, with only 600,000 necessary total XP. So if you're gonna try to grind a Pokémon to level 100, finding a Mon within the erratic group is absolutely your fastest bet. Bad news though, none of the Pokémon you can get before the first trainer battle are in the erratic group. But the good news is twofold. First of all, XP isn't the only way to level up your Pokémon. There's also an item in the Pokémon series you're probably familiar with called Rare Candies. Rare candies don't care about how much experience a level takes. To a rare candy, one level is one level. The other piece of good news is that the experience groups don't really separate much until the later levels. So if you can get enough rare candies before you reach the 30s or the 40s, pretty much all of the experience groups are gonna behave about the same. Let's go back to Zigzagoon. Now, Zigzagoon is in the medium fast experience group, but again, 
that doesn't really matter so long as we can get enough rare candies before we reach like the late 30s or early 40s. As you can see in the video, Shen runs a Zigzagoon and then a Linoon when it evolves for this entire run. Why not one of the starters? Aren't they much stronger than the Zigzagoon line? Well, the starters don't have the almighty ability Pickup, the key that makes this run go from ungodly long to just really long. After every battle you win, a Pokémon with the ability Pickup has a 10% chance of generating a new held item, assuming they weren't already holding something. It isn't a completely random item that they pick up, either. In Ruby and Sapphire, the Pickup item table looks like this. Also, if you're curious why this run is performed in Sapphire and not Emerald, here's Emerald's pickup table. It's much worse and really complicated. Back to Ruby and Sapphire's though, as you can see, 10% of the time when pickup activates, you get a rare candy. So that means after every battle, there's a 1 in 100 chance that your Zigzagoon or Linoon will pick up an item and that item is a rare candy. But there's an additional cool wrinkle about pickup that I haven't mentioned yet. Shen's team doesn't wind up just being this one Zigzagoon by the end. His team is eventually full of Zigzagoons. If you have a pickup user anywhere in your party, even if they don't participate in the battle, they also have a 10% chance of having pickup activate after the battle. So if you have six pickup users in your party, you go from having one opportunity after each battle to having six. Now, this is where the math gets a little complicated. You might think that this means that the odds of getting pickup to activate went from 10% to 60% because you went from having one pickup user to six, or that your rare candy odds go from 1% to 6%. But much like how probabilities in shiny hunting aren't what they first seem, this is actually wrong too. You can't add probabilities together like this that are independent. I've talked a lot about independence, but each instance of pickup is completely independent of the others. They have no bearing on each other. The other important piece to remember is that we have six chances every time for the thing to happen that we want to happen. And any number of those from zero to six full pickups can work out. When you have a situation like this, where multiple different configurations of your successful outcome can happen, you use the binomial distribution. I talked at length about the binomial distribution in my shiny hunting probabilities video and why it doesn't apply to shiny hunting, so go watch that for a primer. But here's our setup. For the probability that one pickup is successful, we have six choose one as our first term in the equation, which basically just denotes that of these six Pokemon, one of them, doesn't matter which, is gonna have pickup activate. That's multiplied by the probability of success raised to the first power, since we want one success, and that's multiplied by the probability of failure raised to the fifth power, since we'll have five of our users not successfully pick up. Your odds, then, of having one successful rare candy pickup have gone up from 1% to 5.7%, over quintuple the odds. If you then sum together the odds of the configurations of having two rare candies appear, and then three and four and five and six, the other possible successful combinations, your odds of all these situations together is a hair higher at 5.85%. So it's close to the initial guess of 6%, but not exactly. And for bigger numbers, and if you're using the binomial theorem for different kinds of situations, the results can be wildly different than if you just added together all of your possibilities at the beginning. The astute among you, though, will have noticed a small problem. There is no way to catch a Zigzagoon before the first rival fight. After all, there are no Pokeballs for sale in the Old Ale Mart, and you don't get any Pokeballs until after you battle your rival and Professor Birch gives you the five free ones. So you could do this run where you define the first trainer as the first trainer after the rival fight, but that's not nearly annoying enough for Shen. After all, the next route will yield slightly better experience on average, and that's just way too easy for us. Plus, level 100 before the second trainer doesn't really have the same ring to it. So, Shen made a modified version of Pokémon Sapphire where your starter is a level 2 Zigzagoon. Isn't that horrible? This way, you have Zigzagoon with pickup right from the start. Okay, great, so we're starting the run with a level 2 Zigzagoon, but where do the other five Zigzagoons come from? We still don't have access to Pokéballs. Well, it turns out, just by pure happenstance, Pickup has a solution for this, too. When Pickup activates, not only does it have a 10% chance to give a rare candy, it also has a 10% chance to give an Ultra Ball. So, after every battle, you have a 1% chance to get a rare candy, but you also have a 1% chance of getting an Ultra Ball, which you can then catch your next Zigzagoon with until you have a full party of six. The extra horrible and hilarious thing about this, though, is that Zigzagoon is not a guaranteed catch with the Ultra Ball. 
Even at level 2, the lowest level it can appear at, Zigzagoon is still just a 78.5% chance to catch with an Ultra Ball at full health. So your odds are pretty good, but not 100. And there's a pretty good chance also that you'll already be too high of a level by the time you get an Ultra Ball to not just knock out any level 2, 3, or 4 Zigzagoon with any move you use. So you can't really lower their health to increase your catch odds unless you already have another Zigzagoon. But assuming you're patient and diligent, you will eventually have a team full of Zigzagoon. The next issue you face though, is how often you should check your party's held items. After all, this is a speed run at the end of the day and pressing start and opening the party menu and checking the held items and closing out of the menu takes time. Should you do it after every battle? You're not guaranteed to get a new held item every time. Plus, a lot of the time, they're not going to be rare candies. It would definitely be best to check it after every battle, so you never go into a battle with a party member already holding something, because after all, if Zigzagoon is holding something, Pickup can't activate, so the battle is worthless. But checking after every single battle is super slow, so you kind of have to just figure out the vibes on how often you should check your party. Shen likes to check his party after every two battles, since he has a full team of six, that seems pretty good to me. You could potentially save a ton of time in this run over Shen if you check your party less frequently and just so happen to get lucky enough to only check once they've picked something up, but that's super unrealistic. Given the sort of 6% odds of pickup activating, you're probably going to wind up checking an empty party a lot. That's just how it is. So how long does this run take? Well, there are some small optimizations you can do that over the course of the entire run wind up saving actually a pretty good amount of time. Like, first of all, move animations are obviously turned off right from the beginning, because if you had to watch the animation for tackle every time, uh, this would take a lot longer. The other thing you can do is nickname your starter and all of the other Zigzagoons one character names, because after all, their names are going to show up on screen a lot. And every time the game has to display the Pokemon's name, it has to scroll all that text. If it's only one character long, over the course of the entire run, that actually is going to save more than you think. Now, there is one potentially controversial thing Shen did when setting up this run. Now, FYI, if you're an ardent YouTube commenter, get those fingers ready because I know you're going to have a take on this and you don't want to miss your golden opportunity to pause the video before I justify what's going on so you can leave your take. Okay, get ready. When modifying the game to make Zigzagoon the starter, Shen also modified one more thing, the maximum text speed. Text now scrolls much faster than just the fast setting in the options menu. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, why would he do this? W what about the sanctity of this super arbitrary run performed over four years ago by a guy I've never met? I care so much about this thing that I'm never gonna do and will probably never talk about with anyone ever again for the rest of my life. Oh wait, it, uh, oh, oh, it doesn't matter. A super interesting thing I want to touch on is at what level does Shen typically have enough rare candies to get to level 100? Is it by level 20, by level 30, by level 40? He's done the run a couple of times, so we actually have a few data points to look at for this. In his world record, if you can even call it that, Shen finally gets to level 100 at around the seven and a half hour mark. His Linoon was level 31 and he had 69 rare candies. Ha 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 ha. Funny number. The point at which you have the number of rare candies you need is where the major time save or time loss in this run is seen. He saved over an hour over his previous PB by just having one more rare candy one level earlier. This is because once you get to the level 30 mark, levels start taking upwards of an hour each just from grinding. Even with the sped up text, imagine a run where you get even just a little more unlucky and you don't have the rare candies you need until level 36. That's four extra hours, if not more. After all, as you go higher in levels and further into the run without the candies you need, the levels start taking longer and longer. Obviously, this also means more battles in between each level up, which does equate to more chances for rare candies to appear, but you can still get really unlucky. If you get even kind of unlucky, you're easily going to lose two or three hours. Get super unlucky and you might lose five. I'd say, based on the data we have, it seems pretty likely to get the rare candies you need by the mid-30s almost every time. Every run Shen has ever done of this has resulted in basically that. Of course, once you reach level 100, you get to fight your first trainer, yay! Which goes basically exactly how you'd expect. 
and to make it a proper speedrun, Shen then goes on to finish the rest of Pokémon Sapphire in a little over an hour. Pretty fast, mostly because, uh, you know, the level 100 in the party? You know, if you think about it, this run is kind of just a really bad 9 hour any percent speedrun of Pokémon Sapphire. So that's good. Hey there, yeah, I'm talking to you. Did you enjoy this YouTube video about probabilities, mathematics, the binomial distribution, and a madman doing a speedrun he probably should not never do again? Well, do I have the product for you? Brilliant! Brilliant is an amazing online learning platform with a myriad of incredible interactive courses to help make your brain super big. And that's important in today's day and age where brain big equals good job. My God, look at all these courses. I can barely even hold them all. This motion tracking will be very easy for me to do in post. <laughs> Brilliant has an intro to probability section in their data sciences course, and that's not even to mention their courses on computer science, scientific thinking, mathematics, and more. So head on over to brilliant.org slash ADEF or click that link in the top of the description and start your 30 day free trial right now. And you get 20% off their annual subscription if you stick around. My God, it's so many courses for me a man who loves to learn. I'm just fired up. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you liked the video. Also, go on over to Shen's Twitch and YouTube. They are both lovely places. The links are in the description. He does a lot of amazing stuff. Also, my top tier patrons are on the screen right now. Thank you so much to all of them. You can support the show at patreon.com slash adefgames. All right, see you in the next one.